Sorry. Mr. Mr. <laughs> it's, well, it's like a little four-year-old just came running up. Mr. Mr. Yeah, he like leaps off his bike, drops the bike, and is like, Mr. Mr. What's going on with the boat? Except well, not in we, that voice. We live on the boat. He's like, I want to take a ride on the boat. Oh yeah, it was not. I can't do his voice. I want to take a ride on the boat. Well, you'll have to talk to your parents. My parents aren't here. <laughs> They're with her. <laughs> and then George got all the belly rubs. Yeah. Yeah, and George was so excited about getting belly rubs. He was trying to bite his own foot, and one boy thought he was trying to bite the boy, and then the boy's, oh, <sighs> it's been a nice place to be. It's just nice talking to people. Yeah. Yeah, we don't get to talk to back. people. Well, one of the fifth. <laughs> it's been a nice place to be. We've met some nice people walking along here. We've saved some ducks that were in that lock yesterday. And, uh, yeah, but time to move on. Yeah, we had somebody knock at the back of the boat, and it was quite like a, you know, like a real wrapping on the back of the boat. And I was like, what the hell's that? So I went up to the side hatch, opened it, looked sideways, and here's this couple of ladies in there, and they come over and they're like, we're with the Chesterfield Canal Trust. I'm like, excellent. What? Why are you here? <laughs> Hi. Hi there. And the uh, the first thing they did was, um, you know, start chatting to me about us being at the end of the canal and everything. And Joe's the one that handles, she, she does all the social media posts and everything. So I didn't know she'd posted to Facebook this picture of us at the end of the canal. So I had no idea what these people were talking about. I posted about. it on the Chesterfield Facebook group. Yeah, yeah. So we ended up, they ended up coming and presenting us with a end of navigation um, plaque. Quite a heavy one. It's, it's actually um, the heaviest one I've seen. Head of navigation. Head of navigation. And... Uh, yeah, apparently normally you have to apply for it and you have to show a photo in this whole process. But they saw our photo, so they just decided to give it to us. Which was kind of funny because they didn't know we were here. They decided to meet at the um, Lockkeeper pub here to have one person hand off to the other the plaque so they could present it to us when they found us. And it turned out, they are like, oh, there's a boat right here. My gosh, it's the one. <laughs> so we had our picture taken. It was just really, really sweet. Yeah. So we don't actually collect these because um, you can get them for every canal you go on. Um, you can get them for all sorts of places, for like tunnels or yeah, whatever, like cities or anything. And we don't collect them. Um, but we've got two now. We've got this one and the silver propeller one. So the ones we've got are like super, super, super yeah, special. Yeah, they're very rare ones nobody a, gets. Not many people actually make it to the end. Like they make it to the visitor moorings of the turning point, but they don't do what Michael, this is really yours. It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> I would have... You really would photograph it. Yeah, what I mean is I would have stopped at the visitor mooring. It's only because of you that we ended up going as far as the... Um... The actual head of my Yeah. Guess. So, but it's yeah, it's just really nice that they came, came over, and it's nice to talk to them. Yeah, yeah, we got a little lit explanation of the plan, the plans for the reopening of the tunnel. Yeah, which you know is sort of a knock on steel sort of thing. But seven years time on the anniversary. I really hope it happens. Yeah, so donate to the trust and um, join the trust and come. And to then the... maybe seven years we can make it all the way down to Chesterfield. Yeah. And actually see the twisted spire that is on the. Yeah. The plaque, so, yeah. which is still quite a few miles away from where you have to get to right now to get the plaque. Yeah, I and mean, if like, if it hadn't been for lockdown, we'd have got the bus there to have a look around. But yeah. another time, seven years time. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully not that far. Um, no, I mean, no, I know. By I boat. Know. Yeah, by boat. Got it. Anyway, today we have decided to move on for a number of reasons. Mainly, we are out of water. We're out of water. We need to do laundry. Um, we've got a BSS booked for next week that we need to get a bubble tester delivered before then to get fitted because yeah. we haven't got a bubble tester. So we need a place where we can get it delivered to and where I will be able to get what I need to do the installation. Yeah, so... So good fun. Yeah, so the weed boat hasn't been through so we know it's pretty bad between well, Worksop and... Yeah, between Worksop and Osbiton we know the weed's pretty bad. Um, so we're probably going to stop it... Kinton Lock? What's the one called? that's got like two Kilton. names, Kilton Lock and and I've also seen it by another name. Yeah. Um, so we think we're going to try and get that far. The, the weed is, there is going to be weed before then, so we'll just have to see what we find. Yeah, it's not particularly far. It's no. mainly through the center of, of Worksep itself, and then there's the um, pumping station, the old sewage pumping station. Yeah, just after that. Yeah, which, which that bend there is where the weed sort of begins. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a bit before, and it's not just the filamentous algae, it's actual weed this time as well. Yeah. So we'll see what we find. And we've had reports from others of like six hours trying to get two miles yeah. and not being able to succeed, which sounds crazy, but also 
not something we want to even try. Yeah. So, so yeah, we'll see what happens. We Michael went to Sainsbury's today, so we've got food. George is doing poo. Again, excellent. So let's just go. Yeah. So a couple of locks that way, and then we'll stop for water, and then maybe laundry. Yeah. And then so we'll it's going to be after a that. long cruise, so not go very far. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're on our way. The family we met this morning are back and they give us a hand with the lock gate. We end up with quite a crowd watching us, which is great because it means we get even more help with the gates. This pound is pretty weedy and Michael definitely gets some caught on the prop. I have a little bit of trouble opening the top gate here as the bottom gates are leaking quite badly. So almost as much water is leaving the lock as is entering it now and it won't equalise. Luckily there are a few extra bodies around to help me get the very heavy gate open. The foul crop is working really hard to get us into this lock. This little boy is very keen to get the gate open, even though the boat isn't all the way down yet. Lots more help with these gates too. I just get to stand and watch for a change. Thank you everyone. There's a fair bit of weed down here too. Only enough to slow us down though, not enough to stop us. the outskirts of Worksop and we meet the Swan family again. This is the same Swan that escorted us out of Worksop a couple of weeks ago. It looks like his whole family is being well looked after by the locals. Rather a lot of rubbish is collected in Worksop Town Lock, so we take a few minutes to fish it out and bag it up. Then we load it onto the boat so we can dispose of it properly.
We stop just below the lock to use the facilities and the CRT's interactive map shows that there's a water point here. The only problem is that on the blue door where the tap is housed, there's a sign for the LSAN but not for the water tap, which makes us question if it is in fact drinking water. We decide to listen to the map and we fill up our tank. Surely if it wasn't drinking water, there'd be a sign telling us that it wasn't drinking water. While the tank's filling, George and I take a short walk to find the laundrette. Unfortunately, it's closed and it's unclear if it's closed down permanently or if it's just closed for lockdown. I can see the big industrial washing machines inside, so it's a little frustrating that we can't use them. While I'm gone, Michael takes a trip down the weed hatch to clear the prop. It's not clear from the picture, but there's quite a bit of weed down there. Another lock and another load of rubbish. The volunteers that usually clean up this area have been unable to meet due to lockdown and it must be really frustrating for them to see the canal like this. Before we descend we pull as much as we can out of the lock. There's even more rubbish below the lock. It's just so sad to see the canal looking like this. And there's a lot more weed down here too. We're here. Where are we? We have just made it to... Um, Kilton? Kilton Lock. Where we said we wanted to be. Yeah. And uh, it was slow. we're cheekily going on the lock landing because nobody else is moving through here. And there's nowhere else to moor. And we know that the next section is potentially the worst weed-wise and we don't have the energy to do it today. No, we'll tackle it tomorrow. Uh, uh, we pulled three large garbage bags full of trash and recycling and more trash out of the canal. Yeah, basically. Lots of fun. The town lock and the Grace Bridge lock. The highlights were a condom and a needle. So yeah. yeah. And the guy coming past going, Council's job, mate. And then he tossed his beer can in the water. I'm surprised you didn't toss him in the water. I thought about it. <laughs> I sincerely considered the notion of, of <laughs> Courtney's job, mate. <laughs> but, um,. Workshop was actually really good. We had so many people stop and watch because I guess no boats come this way. Or um, well, very few boats come this way. So, so many children watching yeah. us. Yeah. And I get anxiety with the little kids. Like, not yeah, the medium. One kid was really giving you like pressure. 
<laughs> and he kept calling me lady. He kept calling you. Lady. What did he call you? He just Mister. called me Mister. Yeah. <laughs> and he kept really emphatically pushing on the wrong side of every one of the lock gates. And, oh, and then this lady, this woman, um, her kids were doing it. And she told them they were the wrong, the wrong side. And I was like, no, they're not. And they went, oh, yeah, yeah, they are. You're right. I said, I listened to the expert, meaning her. And then two minutes later, we were both, we were both like, no, nope, it's the other side. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what was going on. <laughs> but it's just, I know the kids aren't my responsibility, but because it's our boat going through, I feel like I need to keep an eye out for them. So I'm just like, get away from the edge. And yeah, well, especially because like as I'm driving in there, it's like I'm doing double duty trying to make sure. Yeah. Because there's so much... It's not like there's much that can really go wrong if no kid goes in the water, but yeah. there's that thought of what happens if a kid goes in the water? I mean, it's it's bad if a kid goes in when the lock is empty and there's a big drop because you just can't get to it yeah. very easily. And then, yeah, if it's bad if a kid goes in as a boat's moving because then... Because of the boat. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure, like, the parents had it all under control. It's just me being like... <sighs> no, it was, I mean, they were super cute, but they were swarming around on all sides and mm -hmm. stuff. And it was like, it was like, unlike the... Uh, the school children that got us near Thorn, where they were all sort of there but held back a bit. These kids were all jumping in and helping, and, and um, which is and lovely. This was one dad going, two meters, two meters, and the kids like, yeah, two meters, and I'm like, that's not two meters, kid. And kid. yeah, so on top of like trying to help them and keep them safe, I'm trying to keep away from them. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty impossible, but it was nice. It was it was a nice experience. Yeah, going through what works. Up. And the weather. Because the morning it was like foggy and grey. I just thought it was going to rain. I thought and it was going to be cold. And it went all all blue and, uh, and and like nice skies. Big 747 700 flew over us a few minutes ago, really? which was an unusual sight. Mm. So the weed wasn't too bad. It wasn't. There was definitely weed, and it, that one section below workshop was a little bit shallow and slow. The worst bit for weed was from the last lock to here. Yeah, and it was. It was a lot of it. Yeah, but not impossible. Like, it didn't bring you to a standstill like it did before at Forest. No, most of this was floating free. Yeah. And it didn't make it... This this pond seems to be deeper than a lot of the others. Because yeah. the big problem seems to be when there's a lot of the stuff that's on the ground and it's built up, like, really thick. Oh, so it's kind of anchored and it's on this... Ow! Sorry. Yeah, it's anchored, it's <laughs> on the bottom, fun. it's taking up the room, like my boat's sort of running up against it on the bottom. And, and it also just lowers the amount of volume of water that can get across the prop. Mm. So I think that's the worst situation. Yeah, but like honestly, people have said this is the worst that the Chesterfield's been in years. And like, I don't know why people don't come here because if this is the worst, then when it's not this bad, it would be fine. It'd just be a little bit of a pain. And the more traffic that comes here, the better it would be anyway. Yeah, I mean, so, the reality is, is that the way it is right now isn't even that bad. No. Like, the next section is the one that seems to be the worst, and that could be really bad. But but from where we've been through here, it's like, you know, as long as you... Once you sort of realize that you can kind of push it so you can get the engine up to a good speed, and then just make sure that you don't slow down as something goes around the prop and, and you reverse as soon as you have to, but if, you kind of push through it. But um, if there was the level of traffic here that there was, say, on the Trent and Mersey or the Kennet and Avon, it wouldn't be a problem at all. Oh, yeah. No. Unfortunately, if there was the amount of traffic here as there was on the Trent and Mersey or the Kennet and Avon, there wouldn't be, you know, two miles of totally crystal clear water where I can yeah. watch the school of fish that yeah. kept stationed with me the entire way. Yeah, and we wouldn't be such a novelty. Yeah. Yeah, so... So, yeah, somewhere in between that level of traffic and what there is now <laughs> would be nice. Yeah. I think all they really need is just one more weed boat. <laughs> <laughs> apparently there's two on here, and it's like, I think maybe three. Three'd be good, yeah. But it's like a vicious circle, because the weed puts people off, and then people don't come, and then because people don't come, there's no weed, and then that puts people off, and they don't come. Yeah, see, I think it's the trend that really keeps the most people off. Yeah, maybe. They're like... You know, maybe I'd be brave enough to put up with the trend, except for I've heard these things about weed and, and like yeah. the weed is there. It's worth making the trip. Yeah. It is totally worth making the trip. I'm not sure especially if you that like, I'd back up the last mile, but <laughs> especially if you like um quiet canals, like it's honestly it's bliss. Oh yeah. Come here in August. Yeah. That would be my recommendation. Yeah. Try to arrive when there's no pandemic. <laughs> Although if there is gonna be a pandemic we can highly recommend. Yeah, there's worse places to be. Yeah. 
Right, so time to, to get inside. Yeah. And um, George is sitting here tied to uh, the rope, which is on the mooring bollard. And beside that is two bags of garbage that we pulled out of the canal. So we've got to sort of rearrange everything onto the front of the boat. Yeah, I probably shouldn't leave them there, but like we basically couldn't stand on the bow. Yeah. So yeah. Our, our reach goal tomorrow is Forest Hills. Forest Hills? Forest, forest Lock. Forest Locks. Top lock of the Forest Lock, where there's an actual dumpster and we can get rid of this stuff. So hopefully we're not we could have collected, for more another day. Yeah, we could have collected more, but we Yeah, just, we run out of room. Which is quite depressing. So, ah, well. yeah. so thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell if you want to get notifications. George, leave that alone. George! I'm this way. Sorry. Is he coming this way? Yeah. There's another bug. Yeah. He's okay. He just. We're with the we're with the um, Chesterfield Canal Society. Trust. Trust. Chester. We're with the Chesterfield Canal Trust. George. No. <laughs> Sorry. George. 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 Nobody wants to throw that stick for you. We know it's pretty bad between well Worksop and Forest Locks. Well, no, between Worksop and Os Osbiton. No. Yeah, between Worksop and Osbiton, we know the weeds pretty bad. So. That's the end of that one. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Hit the bell if you damn it, I've done it again.